the light at the end of our long winter tunnel is ahead. But so are the calling cards winter leaves behind. The black hole of the asphalt galaxy that by spring can swallow a car whole. Oh. <laughs> That's going to take an extra bag of concrete, it's so deep. <laughs> Before the snow and ice made goosebumps out of our roads, we found Jim Bach doing a little traffic triage. His neighborhood in Chicago is full of these urban craters. So many, in fact, that Jim decided to start fixing them himself. I just want to get my work done and get out. I don't, I'm not interested in having people watch me, really. Especially the watchful gaze of the Chicago police. And I'm always worried about the cops, you know? <laughs> I, I, I never, <laughs> and I've never had any... Fair point. I'm too old to be arrested. I've got, you know, twin boys. <laughs> it's true his gestures of goodwill aren't technically legal, but no one's really bothered him about it because Jim isn't just filling Chicago's potholes. He's turning them into works of art. It's fun to see it reemerge. Like this rendering of a rumpled Cheeto bag made out of marble and glass. So, all right, well, this is looking pretty. So it's just that little bit of unexpected joy, which is kind of a fun thing for me. His street mosaics have been appearing all around the city for years now, dozens of them dotting the roads. Former potholes that are now frames for flowers, for popsicles and creamsicles, and a few that state the obvious like this pothole that proudly screams, it's not a pothole anymore. Yeah, this is probably my most popular piece. I mean, probably more people see this than they would if it was in a gallery somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. A graphic artist, Jim's passion for mosaic started on a trip to Pompeii, Italy, where he realized if art made of glass and marble was durable enough to survive an ancient volcano, sure, it could survive a little modern day traffic. And they do. In fact, they hold up remarkably well, much to the surprise and delight of passers-by. I think it's great. It looks beautiful. I laugh every time I see it. Jim spends eight to ten hours crafting each piece, all in his basement studio, carefully chipping away at the colored glass and then setting each tiny piece in place. There are some moments of terror once the, uh, <laughs> because it, it, it can all go to hell in a second. It's held together by nothing but cheesecloth, and placing it on top of wet concrete is a process that's not entirely forgiving. As it dries, Jim peels the cheesecloth back. It's a painstakingly slow and detailed procedure, especially when you consider the fact that Jim's doing it all on his knees in the middle of traffic. I mean, do you ever feel a little vulnerable out here? Yes, 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 I do. He just tries not to inhale too much. There's a hazard. Yeah. <laughs> but the most nerve-wracking part may be leaving his work behind to dry overnight. We nervously watch cars zoom around his cones with almost reckless disregard, but somehow they survive, at least until they're paved back over. It used to bum me out at first, but it, it, it's kind of, it, it's, it's a price I pay for playing in the street, you know. And that's, <laughs> that's why he posts his works on Instagram. At least there, there's a little social media permanence. He has thousands of followers who anxiously wait for him to post his newest installation. After all, there are plenty of potholes that could use an artistic lift. Too many to ever get to in a single lifetime. So the next time you curse one for destroying your car's alignment or blowing a tire, try to look at them the way Jim Bakker does. Not just as bumps in the road, but an opportunity to do something truly inspiring.